Man, hmm. This honestly feels kind of bad to say. I mean, we had such a good thing going here, so it does pain me to sit up here like a bloke and ask all of you, my fellow audience members, but I mean, come on. I know you more than likely felt the same thing I was feeling halfway through this movie. Isn't this kind of the IP that pretty much matches the definition of an IP that is overstaying its welcome? Oh. Well, fuck me, I guess. I definitely should have checked out those box office numbers before writing that cold open because I genuinely did not expect that. Wait, is the summertime blockbuster season actually trying to do something in this filler arc of a Hollywood season? Inside Out 2 was definitely a feat, but I didn't think that the box office was really in for anything too crazy again until Deadpool and Wolverine. I mean, shit, we're literally in July, and all it took was a Pixar sequel to get the train rolling, but I guess better late than never? Don't get me wrong, back to what I was referring to in the cold open, it's not like A Quiet Place is the only IP that is guilty of, possibly, overstaying their welcome in the past half decade. Hollywood is a desolate wasteland of creativity right now, so I'm not slandering A Quiet Place Day 1 just for the sake of slander. Besides, I feel like I'm kinda getting that fix every Tuesday now. Thanks, Kathleen. I guess it's just even more interesting to me now because while this entry into the franchise was by far the most successful opening yet, in that same breath, I personally thought that this was also the weakest entry of the franchise. Don't get me wrong, maybe I am the bloke here. This could easily be a classic case on my part as an audience member of falsifying my own expectations of what the movie could be in my eyes compared to what was given to me. Trust me, I wouldn't put it past me because it wouldn't be the first time and I guarantee you that it will not be the last. The Quiet Place franchise has been relatively known for being a more character-driven franchise, a franchise that relies on its unique and creative gimmick of silence but tense horror action sequences, a franchise that has one of the most badass alien designs in the game right now, and when you take a step back and look at the structure of this movie, the third entry into the franchise, A Quiet Place Day 1 checks all of those aforementioned boxes. So in reality, there's kind of no reason why the movie shouldn't have worked for me, and in some cases, it definitely did, but in the areas where I personally felt like the movie fell flat, in a way, it kind of felt unrecoverable, and because of that, less engaging. And I don't want to say that I could have been aided in some sick way over my falsified expectations because of the marketing, or maybe I should say mismarketing of this movie, because that is definitely not the case, and it would be disingenuous because of the amount of movies and TV shows that actually do that shameful shit. To the point where I believe that some studios have even convinced themselves into thinking that that could be a good marketing strategy. They're even bigger wankers than I am. I did, however, believe because of the initial trailers that the franchise was going to go in a direction that was, for lack of better terms, more mainstream, or at least stick to the name of day one. This wasn't even a day one. I mean, maybe a quiet place first week or at least a holiday weekend or something. But as an audience member that definitely subscribes to the notion that if it's not broke, don't fix it, I can respect this movie's game for sticking to what they knew and what they believe they do best. And while I personally might not have appreciated this entry as much as the next person, there's no problem in that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk. Alright, this should actually be relatively quick and straight to the point. This franchise is definitely not narrative rocket science. A Quiet Place Day 1 follows the start of the alien invasion, with our POV characters being Sam, a terminally ill cancer patient who... Um, well, I'm just gonna say it because there's no real nice way to say it, has definitely resided herself to that future. Oh, and Eric played by Stranger Things fame Joseph Quinn, who, if I'm going to be completely honest, is just along for the ride in Sam's character journey, I think he's just a bloke that got stranded in America studying abroad and is from the UK, but again, I'm just gonna be real, I don't really remember. I don't know, I just know that he didn't really have any motivations or anything going on with his character, and it's not like Sam really did either, which in a way is a part of her character arc seeing the situation that she 
personally finds herself in. But once the aliens invade, you mostly just watch a very character-driven story as Sam and Eric make their way through the streets of New York on a journey of avoiding aliens, doing side quests, and listening to the government over a fly-by intercom in order to get Sam one last slice of Patsy's pizza for the road. And after that, well, that is pretty much it. Oh, actually, I do remember Eric's motivation. It was to get to the South because of the evacuations. But I mean, that's literally 99% of everybody's motivation in that moment. So yeah, it makes sense. I didn't remember that. So getting back to the fact of my own falsifications on my own expectations and how easy that could actually be, the simplest way that I could put it, I guess I found myself a little disappointed at the fact that I thought this was going to be a more alien-driven movie in the effects that the alien invasion had on humanity as a whole, not just a couple of sole individual people. I personally would have enjoyed watching how humanity came to figure out how to survive in a world where noises and sounds and communication are very much commonplace, and how it would have been to watch how we as a species would have had to evolve and come to that conclusion rather quickly because as I mentioned before, this franchise has one of the most badass alien species in the game right now. In a world where noise and sound is pretty much prevalent everywhere you go, how would we as a species even survive an invasion such as this? That is the type of idea that I so easily put in my own head that I genuinely thought that that's what was going to get executed on my screen instead of actually paying attention to the trailers and what made this franchise its bread and butter in the first place. But even disregarding that aspect of my own falsified expectations, in that same breath when referring to the movie that was given to me, the characters just didn't do it for me. And that's no shame in the acting performances themselves, the job was done in spades, that was not the issue. Just in a world where I feel like character motivations are everything, and in a franchise that is already so rich with intriguing and engaging characters already, it's a high bar to stand beside. It's a silver medal to gold medal dilemma. A silver medal isn't inherently bad, but when compared to what it could be, it only leaves the feeling of disappointment. In order to give a little praise though, because I feel like I have just been a downer throughout the entirety of this video, when the aliens were being the aliens, it was epic. The alien stampede scenes really showcase the raw nature and epic power this species possesses. And when our characters were in chase sequences, I'm specifically right now thinking about that ending chase scene with, oh man, I already forgot his name, but I was genuinely on the edge of my seat. Real gripping stuff. At the end of the day, the best way that I could sum up this movie for me personally is that while I definitely did enjoy myself, I didn't enjoy myself as much as I wanted to. And I'm not quite sure if that is my own fault or the movie's. Don't get me wrong, the comments will more than likely help me out with that. But I don't really see a world where I end up re-watching this movie over the other two entries in the franchise. But in that same breath, this is a prequel that knows exactly what makes its franchise successful. And in a way, what the audience wants. So can I really blame them for not changing the formula? No. And don't get me wrong, as an audience member, I am definitely happy that the box office is looking solid and a movie that could quite possibly be a rare financial success in the 2024 Hollywood filler arc that we find ourselves in. I just feel like this is either going to be a hit or miss depending on if you're a bloke like myself or not. So in a ranking system, or I guess you could say a grading system that is relatively new that eventually won't be new, we started this in 2024 and honestly I would say it's going pretty solid so far. I would go say watch some of those reviews, even though you're just going to see where I ranked everything previously here. But I mean, you can go do your boy a solid. With that being said, unfortunately, A Quiet Place Day 1 is an A for effort type of movie for me. But I definitely see a world where some people move it up to an actual movie. I definitely see the vision. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.